Hello everyone and welcome to the final round of the 2021 Tata Steel Chess Tournament in a game between Jordan Van Forest and Nils Grandelius. Van Forest has excellent chances of winning the tournament, he's trailing to Giri by half a point and uh, if he wins and for example Giri loses his game uh, then anything could still happen. So he of course has every bit of uh, incentive to win the, uh, the event uh, but Grandelius of course has something to say about that. So let's see what happens here as I think we're gonna have a lot of games to cover in the final round because they're all... Uh, pretty crazy. So Van Forest uh, opens with e4. We have c5, knight to f3, d6, and d4. So just a normal uh, Sicilian defense. We have captures, captures, uh, knight to f6, knight to c3, and a6. Again, we have the knight orf on the board for I don't know uh, how many times in this tournament already. And here Van Forest uh, goes for uh, the move Carlsen already played against Grandelius, and that's queen to d3. And Carlsen won that game very nicely, uh, but of course probably after that Grandelius uh, came up with some ideas on how to counter the queen to d3 idea. So it's very, uh, very interesting uh, how this game continues. Knight b to d7. Uh, we have bishop to e2, and now already with b5, uh, we have a completely new game uh, already as of move 8. So b5 is on the board, and now uh, Jordan uh, shows just how prepared he came for this game, and he plays a4, which is pretty, pretty great, uh, uh, considering knight to c5 will come with an attack on the queen and the pawn. This pawn is already under attack, and b4 will just remove the defender. So this is a straight-out pawn sacrifice already from the start. So knight to c5 by Grandelius going after the queen and this pawn. Uh, queen to e3 and now just removing one of the defenders of the e4 pawn. We have b4, knight to d5 and now uh, Grandelius grabs this pawn. Knight captures uh, on d4 and now a5. So very very nice preparation by uh, Van Forest going after this b6 square. He wants to get this knight over there. Uh, and uh, of course Grandelius eliminates it. We have knight captures on d5, queen captures on e4 and now uh, bishop to b7 could be played but uh, you don't really gain anything. You're not threatening any discoveries and the bishop uh, will be undefended on b7. So first defending the knight with e6 and now uh, Van Forest castles. We have castles, bishop to d7 and now bishop to d2. Uh, we have bishop to e7, black also prepares the castle, and queen to f3 now, making it a bit difficult for the knight to move as the rook would hang. So here, castles, uh, and now just queen to d3. Now the knight definitely cannot move, and c4 is definitely coming. So here, queen to b8, uh, adding more defense to the b4 pawn, and the d6 pawn, and here uh, we have c4. So uh, the knight, of course, cannot move, the rook would uh, hang. So uh, b captures on c3 en passant, we have b captures on c3 now again preparing to push c4, uh, so rook to a7, and here just rook f to b1, and the white has uh, amazing development uh, for the price of only one pawn, so let's see what happens here, we have queen to c8 and c4 now, kicking uh, the knight away. And this is where the magic happens. It doesn't matter where the knight goes or do you uh, maybe even play e5 and try to trade off the knight. Because whatever black plays, uh, white's next move is the same. So here black played knight to f6. But now feel free to pause the video for the first time uh, in this video and try to find the move uh, when forest played while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on offering that knight without question. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight to b5. And it's a very common uh, in the when playing against the knight of to either sacrifice something on b5 or, or even offer something on b5. But I've never seen it done in quite such a, such a way. And you have to accept the knight. Uh, if you don't accept the knight, for example, you play something like rook to a8, then knight captures on d6, for example, bishop captures, queen captures, and yes, you pick up the this c4 pawn but what about the rook on a8 and white doesn't even have to capture it right away white can first improve the position of the rooks for example queen c8 uh, rook c1 and only then capture on a8 and have a completely winning position so instead a captures on b5 was played we have c captures and now the two connected pass pawns are just insane we've reached the position from the thumbnail and uh, you simply cannot allow b6. b6 just traps the rook and that's it. The bishop covers this, the queen will be covering the a6 square, you have to do something. And the only way to counter this is to give up the bishop right away. So bishop captures on b5, uh, we have queen captures on b5, and now comes knight to d7. And this is again 
not the most opti optimal way to play this. You kind of had to play d5 here to block this light core bishop, uh, but here after knight to d or even knight to d5 uh, could have been played. For example, knight to d5, and now you we would have something like bishop captures e captures and bishop to e3 going after the rook. But now rook a6 can be played, and then bishop to d4 just not allowing bishop to f6. Uh, black still up upon, but white is the one who will be pushing. However, after queen captures on b5, we have knight to d7. Uh, but here, uh, Grandelius missed one very sneaky idea. So once again, pause the video and try to find this idea for white while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the uh, extremely paralyzing bishop to b7. Also for those of you who just want to enjoy the show. And here black is really without a good move. Queen to d8 was played and now a6. Now completely trapping that rook and the bishop to e3 is coming. So what can you do? To prevent this uh, bishop from uh, coming here well you could go for knight to c5 or bishop to f6 first just attacking the rook here and now again an extremely interesting position you could consider giving up the rook with bishop to e3 which is very much playable uh, the problem is uh, black will of course not go after the rook if you just trade off the rooks then captures captures and after the bishop retreats this bishop retreats and then just a7 a8 wins the game so what would happen after bishop to e3 is probably something like knight to c5 uh, and then the rook still being under attack you'd have to play rook to a2 and then queen to e8 offering a, tree, a queen trade. Queen b6 attacking the rook and queen to b8 and black sort of holds uh, but uh, it would be... It would be very interesting because white will uh, at some point uh, create some sort of a breakthrough. So instead of this uh, idea with bishop to e3, after bishop to f6 by black, we have bishop to a5 by Van Forest, now attacking the queen. So of course black needs to react to this, queen to e8 was played, and now bishop to c7, going after that d6 pawn, which would also go after this rook. So Grandelius grabs the rook on a1, it's the absolute best move, and here rook captures on a1 by Van Forest. Uh, but there was a there was a better line. Bishop captures on d6 is a bit more forcing. Uh, point being that now after the bishop uh, retreats, for example, bishop to e5, you only then capture the rook. Uh, and now black uh, has a lot of problems. Because if you go for queen captures on f8, uh, for, for example, if you go king captures on f8, then just rook to c1. And you're in a lot of trouble here with this rook to c8 being threatened. So you'd probably have to capture queen captures here. But then you will allow queen captures on d7 and then uh, white just continues pushing this for example g6 g3 and later on uh, you can just uh, bring the rook into the game and it's going to be a very very uh, a difficult uh, difficult position for black to play so uh, this was in the position however van forest uh, captured the rook on a1 and this allows for a very very good defense for grandelius if grandelius finds a uh, knight to c5 Point being that after queen to b6, for example, going after the rook, you have this queen to d7 move. And after queen captures on a7, queen captures on c7, and black is defending because uh, you've given back the material. You're going to go after the bishop, even rook to b8 is a possibility, and you will eliminate that pasky uh, a6 pawn. However, after rook captures on a1, Grandelius missed knight to c5, he played d5, and now there simply isn't all that much to be done here. The problem is Grandelius spent a lot of time trying to work out everything that's happening in this uh, preparation from Van Forest, because Van Forest is basically not even spending time, he, he has all of this prepared. So bishop to d6, going after the rook here, this is the absolute uh, the absolute best, and the situation on the clock is Van Forest is over an hour, and Grandelius has only five minutes on the clock and it's only move 29 they still have 11 more moves to make so queen to d8 making some room for the rook and now while well, you could capture the rook we have rook to c1 first just going after that uh, uh, queen to c8 idea uh, rook to c8 idea but let's just show what happens if you capture if you capture knight captures rook to c1 now again you're going after the c8 square Queen to d6, and now uh, we have to make some breeding room for the king, of course. g3, g6, black needs to do the same. 
and now rook to c6 grabbing hold of the b6 square for your queen and after queen to e5 now queen to b6 but you have to calculate what happens after queen to e1 check king to g2 now queen to e4 check king to f1 and now after queen to h1 check king to e2 queen to e4 and king to d2 there are no more checks and now white is winning but that's a lot of checks to consider and you don't want to uh, overthink your position and give Grandelius uh, time to think uh, on your own time so first rook to c1 you can play all of that once you've played rook to c1 so no point in rushing that and now g6 uh, this was a very interesting position because maybe rook to e8 was playable here uh, since uh, rook to c8 right away is not a possibility. Rook to c8 right away, black will happily capture that. And after captures, captures, black will have two rooks and the knight against queen and bishop. And the black will actually be better here. He's also uh, up a pawn for the moment. So uh, maybe rook to e8 was not such a terrible idea to consider, but of course white doesn't have to play rook to c8, white just continues mounting the pressure. Uh, but okay, uh, after this rook to c1, g6 was played, and now uh, h3. White also makes some breeding room for the king, even though just capturing the rook right now is definitely an option. So h3 first, saying you have no moves either way. I can play as slow as I want, and now rook to e8. Here Grandelius saves the rook, but now comes rook to c7. And here uh, white, uh, black is in big problems because the knight is under attack. And uh, what do you do with the knight? Knight to f6 was played, but now bishop to e5. Preparing captures, and if the queen recaptures, then the queen captures the rook on e8. So here, knight to e4 was played, but now uh, for the final time in this video, pause the video and win the game for Gandelius in the simplest possible way uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding an incredibly forcing line. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen to c6. You still attack the rook, but now you're definitely threatening queen to c8. So not much black can do about this. Black played uh, rook to f8, but now bishop to d4. Uh, so just uh, attacking that rook and now what do you play here? Uh, there's no point in trying to save the rook. So here queen to b8 was played, but now not in a rush to capture the rook. We have f3, kicking away the knight from such an active square. And there really isn't uh, much for, for black to do here. Any move you play loses. But here Grandelius shows why he's such a very strong grandmaster because he finds... Uh, a way to, 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 to at least put up some uh, some resistance. He plays the rook captures on a6. And what do you play now? If queen captures on a6, then you hang the rook on c7. So here, bishop captures on a6 is played, and now queen to b4, uh, trying to trick uh, trying to trick white, because here if you go after uh, pawn captures, then queen captures on d4, check, and you will have a perpetual. For example, king h2, queen e5, check, you can play g3, but then queen to b2, check, and now the problem is if queen c2, you can capture, capture, and yes, you're up a bishop, but black has five points. You only have two, and you will not be winning this game. So very tricky, this uh, queen to b4 idea. But of course, bishop to e5, one forest uh, doesn't fall for that. We have queen to e1 check, king to h2, and now even knight to f2 check, preparing uh, queen to h1. But luckily, the white king has uh, an escape square, and that is the g3 square. So here, queen c3. Now setting up a mating attack while offering to trade queens because now uh, rook to c8 is coming and with the bishop covering all of the dark squares here, uh, there is no escaping checkmate. So queen to h1 check, king to g3. Now even queen to g1 check, preparing knight to h1 to create a few more problems for white. But rook to c8 now going for that capture. And now knight to h1 with check. Uh, if, if you go king to g4, then it's not going to be a win for white. You have to be very careful. Because if you cap, if you go here and allow this to come with check, then king f4 and uh, black starts a king hunt. Queen g3 check, king to e3, and now queen to f2 check. King to d3, and now queen to f1 with check. King c2, and now queen captures on a6. And all of a sudden, uh, you're no longer up any material. If captures, captures. Uh, Black now definitely has a fighting chance. He's even up three pawns, so good luck winning this. So instead, after knight to h1 check, we have king to h4, the absolute strongest, uh, queen to f2 with check, and now g3. The bishop and king now cover the g3 pawn, but uh, Grandelius continues the king hunt. g5 with check. King captures on g5, 
And now, how do you continue? You have to try and play something. H6, F6, something must be played. Uh, F6 was attempted here, uh, and now King to H6. It would be incredibly uh, uh, terrible <laughs> if Bishop captures on F6 comes, because then you are getting checkmated. You no longer guard the G3 pawn, and then after captures is just a very nice checkmate. Captures uh, King G5, Queen to F5 with check, King H4, Queen F4 check, King to H3, and now Queen to G3 will be checkmate. So uh, you have to be very careful. Uh, king to h6, an incredible. Uh, now, uh, you know, uh, it's. Uh, I'm calling this a king hunt, but this is actually a king walk, and it's a very different thing. When you when you go for a king king walk, it's a voluntary, uh, you know, movement of the king. A king hunt is where uh, uh, your opponent's king doesn't really have a choice and usually gets checkmated in the end. So this is a king walk, not a king hunt. Uh, but okay, f captures on e5, and now queen captures on e5. Also possible, instead of queen captures on e5, is just queen to c7, because there's just nothing to be done here. After this one little check, or queen to e3 check, you can just play f4, and that's it. There are no more checks, there are no more tricks here. Uh, you cannot move the rook, uh, queen to g7 will be checkmate on the next move, and that's it. So, uh, queen to c7 was a possibility, Van Forest played queen captures on e5, uh, a, simple, a similar idea, going for the same checkmate, you don't really care about the rook here, uh, this check again is met with f4, there's no way to go around this, so here uh, we have uh, queen to e5, and it was in this position on move 47, after reaching time control, uh, that Niels Grandelius resigned the game, and Jordan Van Forest wins one of the most beautiful games in the entire tournament, uh, and uh, well, we'll see if it is enough for him to win the tournament because a lot is still happening. Alireza is still playing, Fabi is still playing, uh, Giri is still playing against David Anton, and that game is also quite impressive. Uh, the Carlson uh, NVL game also already finished, it was uh, also a masterpiece. So, we're, we're gonna have a lot of fun covering uh, all of those for, uh, for today and tomorrow. But now, let's uh, continue with the tournament. So, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, really, really awesome stuff by Jordan Van Forest. Uh, I would like to thank KD Nuggets, Carlo Kosu, uh, Mohit TS, Jeff Norris and Aditya Suresh Kumar for contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Tata Steel, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.